Well, hello everyone. I am Dr. Anthony Edwards and I am the instructor for higher education leadership. And today we're gonna to be going over college and university missions and stakeholders, and purposes, perspectives, and pressures. So in this lesson, we're going to cover higher education activities, things that happen in higher ed, the stakeholders, what are the mission emphases of those stakeholders, so what those stakeholders think is central to the mission of the institution, what are some priorities when you uh, put together a mission. Also, how do you communicate the mission and vision, and then what are some different sources of perspectives uh, from the different stakeholders, so how can you gather this information. All right, so let's just kind of start out with what are some of the activities uh, that uh, take place in higher ed. And these all give rise to what the priorities are going to be in the institution. Uh, so you have things from, you know, obviously education at the graduate and undergraduate level, uh, alumni and donor activities, athletics. You've got clinical research and basic research, depending on the institution. Uh, you know, also, you have financial management. You got to manage the money, your budget. Uh, there might be some clinical services that are uh, offered uh, that are you know, maybe outside the scope of, of research. Uh, sponsored research, extension and continuing ed. So maybe some off-campus programs or programs that aren't focused on actual degrees. Uh, kind of operations, facility operations, IT, transportation, dining, campus safety and student engagement. So these are all things that happen on college campuses. And so, uh, you know, as far as, you know, strategic planning and mission statements, uh, you're gonna have to figure out which of these things, uh, while you're doing most of them at your institution, uh, you have to figure out which things you're gonna prioritize. So who are some of the stakeholders who are involved in helping put together missions? for colleges and universities. Well, yeah, you can separate them into internal and external stakeholders. So internal stakeholders include things like uh, your faculty, staff, prospective and current students, uh, institutional leaders, uh, could be external operations or extension, your continuing education, patients, clients. Uh, external stakeholders are things like taxpayers, parents, donors, uh, employers or the corporate sector businesses, uh, the family of the patients and clients, uh, alumni advisory boards uh, or alumni and advisory boards because sometimes the advisory boards include other people besides uh, alumni, uh, professional associations, accrediting bodies, uh, disciplinary organizations that regulate higher ed, legislators, politicians, government employees, regulators. Uh, somewhere in the middle, you might f find that you have like a governing board. Uh, so they're, they, they sit somewhere in the middle because they, they are, in a sense, connected to the institution, but they usually are people who don't work at the institution. Uh, but these are all stakeholders who can have a voice in developing the mission. So if we were to group all of those things, that stakeholders, you know, different kind of stakeholders you have and what are the different duties, you could group a lot of the different activities into three categories, research, teaching, and service. Uh, and those of you all who have some exposure to academic affairs, this probably sounds really similar to tenure and promotion criteria uh, for faculty. Uh, but, you know, regardless of what role you serve at the institution, uh, if you're working as a higher ed leader, you're either probably involved in teaching, involved in research, or involved in service in the sense of, you know, whether it's student affairs or admissions or financial aid, um, you know, there are other parts of uh, the institution. And some of you have roles where you have to do two or all three. Okay. So all these activities you got to prioritize, and a lot of these will look familiar from what was on the activities uh, slide, uh, but these are all different things that you can prioritize. Uh, so you can, you know, maybe that 
you're focusing on, you know, one institution might be focusing on students and faculty. Another institution might be f really focused on uh, extension divisions or employers. Now, you can also look at this within the institution. So uh, admissions might be really focused on students and parents. Uh, career services might be really focused on employers and businesses. Uh, the president's office might be really focused on donors and politicians um, or alumni. So uh, if your institution has maybe a medical school or similar uh, type of uh, organization, you might be really focused on patients, clients, and their families. So it really just kind of depends on the type of institution, the type of department that you're in as to what the priorities are. And a good point here is that you may have an institutional mission, you know, so that each college or university will have a mission statement. But within that, different divisions and departments may also have a mission statement that's a little more specific that aligns with the overall mission statement, uh, but it's specific to the area that they work in. So how do you communicate mission and vision? So as a higher ed leader, there are some questions that the authors of our textbook uh, put forth for us to think about. So first question is who's going to be impacted? Who, and then who are the interested stakeholders? So decisions have impacts and they, they, they're going to, you know, may have positive consequences for some and negative consequences for other. You know, keep, you got to think about that and what the impact is going to be. Uh, who's going to be most interested in the mission and vision of the institution? Second, what are the definitions that are involved in that mission statement? So uh, what's the meaning of, of the words in there? So are there priorities? Uh, you know, how are we defining student success? What does that mean? Student success at College A might not be the same thing as student success at College B. Uh, Student engagement might not be the same thing at College C as it is at College D. Uh, so it just really depends on how you're defining these terms. And that will determine the actions that are in alignment with the mission. All right, so what needs, interests, and ideas will impact the definition? So you, know, you may be def wanting to define it in a certain way, and then, so what are the needs of the people involved? What are their interests, you know, if they're students, you know, what things interest you, what, what, what do students need to be successful, uh, what ideas, concepts um, are driving or impacting the decision. If there's shared governance uh, is a big idea at that institution, what faculty think about certain ideas will be really important, what staff think about things are really important. So, it, you know, so it, that depends on how you're going to uh, craft that mission. Also, What's your vision or what's your idea about the mission of the institution or the department? As a leader, you've got to have in your mind, kind of based on what you've seen, read, heard, collected, a sense of what you feel is the mission. And then finally, how can you connect others to your idea? So as a leader, you've got to have influence. How do you bring others into the fold uh, who, you know, believe what you believe, but also don't be so uh, blinded by your own ideas that you don't incorporate expectations of other stakeholders. What are their ideas? Because at the end of the day, they need to feel like this is their idea. Uh, so if you create a strategic plan for your uh, unit, so let's just say you're, you manage TRIO programs at your institution, and you create that as the leader, but without really talking to your team and talking to the students that you serve, um, you're not going to have buy-in on that that mission or that vision. Okay, uh, same goes true on a university or a college level. If you didn't take into account the ideas and interests of the people that uh, work at that institution or have some relationship to that institution, if they're external. Uh, that mission is not necessarily going to have the buy-in or the traction that you need. Uh, if, you, if you, you know, want the institution to be successful, but you haven't consulted, 
you know, you want students to, have, if you have a vision of students being successful in the workforce, but you haven't consulted the workforce and what they need, uh, that's going to limit your effectiveness of achieving that mission. So, okay, you realize you got to incorporate stakeholder perspectives. So, how are you going to collect that information? So, this is not an exhaustive list, but this kind of gives you an idea of where you can collect information. So, if it's college leadership, things that you know you may already have. If you're trying to get information from college leadership, there may already be a mission statement for the institution. Uh, maybe you're trying to craft one for your department or division. Uh, there's probably already a, a former strategic plan if it's not current, uh, but hopefully you have a, you're operating within a current strategic plan. Uh, obviously, there's going to be information on the website that you can use that the leadership has has put on the on the web. Uh, you know any marketing recruitment materials that they provide you, you know will ha likely have some messaging on it from leadership uh, tenure and promotion criteria the institution sets uh, can also indicate uh, the perspective of leadership on what they want from faculty uh, as well as budget priorities so if leadership can indicate where the priorities are for spending what gets more what gets less and that also gives you a sense of what the priorities are so with faculty, ways you can collect information, obviously a theme you'll see here are surveys. So you can do a faculty survey. Uh, obviously, the, you're looking at the faculty culture, uh, leadership groups, whether it's faculty senate or other groups, uh, hiring criteria, you know, how, how are fi faculty uh, hired, uh, which is going to influence the type of faculty that you bring to your institution. Uh, and is that changing over time? Are you, be, you know, being more rigorous in what type of uh, expectations you have? And, you know, what's the difference between newer and older faculty? All right, students. So if you're collecting information from students, interviews, surveys can all be uh, valuable sources of information. The student newspaper can also be a good source of information because they're, in a sense, reporting on what students think. In the campus culture at large, so you can get a sense from the culture. Uh, things you need to consider. All right, what about parents? So obviously you can do parent surveys to get a sense with what they what their needs and concerns are. Uh, there are sometimes some schools can have groups for parents. Uh, you can conduct focus groups and do interviews. Uh, for uh, the public, you know obviously there's rankings out there, whether it's US News or others, there's so many out there. Um, you can also contact alumni, you can do surveys, uh, looking at the political landscape or climate in your uh, state or country, uh, donors, employers in business, so those are all groups that you want to consult. And for institutions that have clinical services, clinical research, Looking at what best practices are can give you some perspective as well as surveys or interviews. Uh, for the cl clinicians themselves, their professional associations are going to have some impact on their perspective. Uh, you can obviously survey them, also look at norms or uh, expectations for practice in that particular specialty. And for boards, obviously boards are going to have, whether it's a governing board or some other board, uh, or advisory board, there's going to be some agenda for those meetings. A lot of times those are made public. Uh, you can sometimes request data uh, from those boards or from the, or the institution. Uh, the metrics of which they're measuring success as a board. Uh, you can obviously do interviews and surveys with that group as well. Okay, so what did we cover today? Well, we covered higher education activities. We talked about different kinds of stakeholders in higher education, internal and external. We talked about the uh, different emphases uh, for the mission for these different stakeholder groups. We talked about different priorities for crafting the mission of the institution or of a division or department. We talked about how you might communicate the mission and vision as a leader and what things you need to consider in doing that. And then also we talked about different sources of uh, perspectives from stakeholder groups. So 
hope you found this video helpful. Uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, listening. Please give it a like. Uh, feel free to subscribe as well uh, to get more information on higher education leadership. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.